Hey everyone, welcome to what will likely be one of the wilder comment sections on my YouTube channel. But today we're gonna to be talking about the IWI Galil. Specifically, this is the SAR version. On um, my Israeli parlance, that means short automatic rifle. Obviously this being one in the US. This is a semi-automatic only gun. Um, this is a registered short barreled rifle um, built from a, well, Israeli kit by IT, or ATI, American Tactical Imports. Uh, they call these the Galio, um, but it is effectively a Israeli kit built Galil SAR. Now, uh, ATI has been making IWI Galil kits um, into guns for the United States market for a while in various different models. I have always been attached to the kind of short carbine versions of most guns, so I went ahead and did one of these. Now, I'm not gonna be going too deep into the depth of the history of the Galil or the other variants. I'm mostly just gonna be going over how this rifle uh, is set up and the merits therein, and then maybe how the ATI guns um, perform, because um, I have had some interesting issues with this gun. How much of that can just be attributed uh, attributed to it being an older style Galil versus a ATI build? I can't really say, but uh, we're gonna go over it. Um, I also, uh, regardless of the shirt that I'm wearing, I squeezed into an IDF shirt that my parents picked up for me while they were in Israel, um, mostly for the LARP aspect of it, um, but I make no statements about the validity or uh, merits of any actions uh, performed by my country or any others for that matter, um, my country being the United States, not Israel for what that's worth. So uh, with that being said, also I'm gonna throw out a disclaimer, we are on a live range, so there are gonna be sounds of gunshots going on behind me. You know, we're gonna do the best that we can. I'm, I'm doing my best here, guys. Now, uh, this is not gonna be in full original configuration, but the vast majority of it is. Um, so starting up front, we have just kind of a, almost like A1 style flash hider um, where it's open tongs all the way around. There's no uh, closed off base uh, like you see on the A2 bird cages that we have here in the United States. Um, now, even though this is not a muzzle brake, I will say that this gun does shoot relatively flat uh, considering how short it is. Um, but that muzzle uh, or that flash hider actually does a really good job of taming the muzzle flash. Now, obviously being, uh, I believe these are like an 11 inch barrel, um, you're still gonna be dealing with some muzzle flash, um, but not as bad as it would be with any other sort of muzzle device on there. And as you'll see from the build drills and mag dumps that I've done with this thing, um, that muzzle device works perfectly fine. Now, moving back to the front sight, the front sight and the sight picture in general, um, obviously, you know, the, the Galil is based on the, um, the Finnish uh, Valmets, which are then also based on AKs. So the sight picture is roughly AK, especially with the front sight. Now we do have a fully hooded front sight with an opening on top to be able to um, basically adjust your front sight up and down or be able to remove your front sight. But then you've also got these big screws on either side of the front sight, and that is to actually drift the whole thing left to right. Now, ordinarily, there would be a night sight that would flip up um, behind, or uh, yeah, behind the front sight. I don't have night sights for this. I do plan on picking some up at some point just to have it be a little bit more correct. Um, however, those are surprisingly difficult to find and when you do find them, they're actually surprisingly expensive. Um, now, there is no bayonet lug or anything like that on the SAR models, the short versions. The longer versions, you might start having things like that and bipods, again, being the like SBR version, that's not something we're dealing with. Got the standard gas tube up top. There are options if you wanted to put railed gas tubes on these. Not really something that I'm particularly worried about, but options are out there. Now the uh, furniture on here, the handguard and the pistol grip and the stock are all um, like OG style. So you do have the polymer handguard up front. This thing definitely shows some use and abuse, uh, which I kind of dig. I thought about sw trying to swap it out for some like wood furniture, but I just, I just like how gritty this thing looks, including the stock back here. So the stock actually picked up from Apex Gun Parts uh, and they had a variety of different versions available with different levels of original to new finish. Uh, I wanted something that was kind of original. It was described as good condition. Um, 
Not how I would probably describe the condition of this stock. However, again, I kind of like the grittiness of it. Um, originally, I was considering like refinishing it, but I just like the look of it being worn like it is. It does still fold off to the right-hand side, so uh, that is all gonna be standard Galil fare. You can just pull it open, but in order to collapse it, very similar to the FAL paratrooper stocks, you've got to pull down on the joint, and then that allows it to fold. And of course, allows you to slam it down on your hand as well. So moving back forward, one of the most iconic things about the Galil is the upswept charging handle. The upswept charging handle, especially if you're not trying to modernize this and put optics on top, makes it really easy to be able to charge the weapon with your left hand when you're doing your mag changes. So when you slam in a mag, just being able to roll the gun over, you can just kind of palm that charging handle and be able to run that thing back. Uh, now, some people love it, some people hate it. For me, I, I just think it's one of those iconic things about Galil's and one of the things that I just love about it. It, again, makes it very easy as a righty to do it. Now, if you were starting to put optics or try to modernize these things, that might be a detriment because you're not getting a lot on the side like you could with a standard AK rack on the charging handle. Um, but again, if you're just keeping it classic, as I plan to on this thing, really easy to come over the top. Um, now, moving back, the safety is another kind of iconically Galil thing. Uh, this has been adopted or kept with the um, newer models of the Galil Aces and the Ace Gen 2s. Uh, you also see it on like the Sam 7s from Bulgaria on their AKs, but we have an ambidextrous safety. So you can run the safety, typical AK, with your flat hand out front or you've got the ability to run it with your thumb. So uh, if I swap this back and forth and it's marked S and F for safe and fire, it will manipulate the safety on the other side. Now I find for me, just with my little short hands, my little short Donald Trump fingers, uh, I have a hard time being able to sweep the gun back to put it on fire. However, pushing it back forward to get it on safe is really easy. So because I've got so much time on AKs, I tend to just swipe it down with my hand to put it on fire. And then honestly, usually again, because of my familiarity with AKs, I typically sweep it back up to safe, but it's a lot easier for me to just use my thumb to be able to swipe that up to safe when I am ready. Now, continuing on to talk about magazine changes, um, you do have kind of a gated trigger guard back or a magazine release back here, makes it a little bit less likely for the magazine release to get bumped. Not that I really find that to be an issue on AKs. Um, you do have rockin' style magazines, a la AKs as well. Um, but then you've also got a little bit of a flare on the side, mostly for lefties, because for me as a righty, that little extra flare doesn't do much for me. Um, but if you're doing it as a lefty, you've got this nice big paddle here to kind of hit to swipe that magazine out. Now, the rear sight obviously is mounted to the dust cover, unlike the um, front trunnion uh, on like an AK. So that means a couple things. So first of all, we can have something like a peep aperture, which the Galils have, um, but that also means that the dust cover has to be really, really well locked in place. Otherwise it's gonna be rattling all over the place and you're not actually gonna maintain any semblance of accuracy. So these things are really, really tightly fit, or at least they should be. Um, just one of the main issues I had with this thing right out of the box is that the dust cover was pretty wobbly. So I had to spend a lot of time with pliers and a you know a rubber mallet trying to reform this dust cover to get it to fit more tightly. Again, how much of that is a Galil issue? How much of that is an ATI issue? I can't really say. While we're talking about the issues out of the box, one of the other things, there's like a little set screw that's supposed to hold the um, muzzle device in place. And you can even see that it's staked. Uh, however, first range trip of this thing, that went bye-bye, completely disappeared. And I've had constant issues of this muzzle device coming loose. There's not any wrench flats on it to help really torque it down. So the last time that happened, I just cleaned the threads up really nice, put some red Loctite on there, stuck a screwdriver in there, really torqued down on it, hasn't been an issue since. So do with that information what you will. Um, but I did have to work on that dust cover. Now the rear sight does have a flip aperture. This one happens to be really stiff and it's gonna be graduated for different distances. So it's gonna change the elevation of that peep. So we've got a 500 and I believe a 200, no 300 um, aperture. 
Now there is also a halfway position. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but that is where the night sights are again gonna come into play. Normally there would be a little flip up kind of U-notch that would sit at the rear. That allows you to get a more gross sight picture up front. However, the other thing I've noticed that you can do is kind of do like a caveman EOTech thing if you're familiar with that concept. If not, AK Operators Union has a really good video on that. But basically just kind of look over the rear sight, use my front sight kind of as a big giant EOTech style reticle and just be able to get fast shots close. And for what I'm doing, it's plenty good for that. Um, that being said, I do like the sight picture. I'm always a fan of uh, peep and post front sights, uh, when peep rear and post front sights when I can get them. It just makes life a lot easier, and for me at least is a little bit more intuitive and easy to do under pressure. Now the sling you see on here, this is a regular AK com block sling that I had laying around and just I felt looked appropriate on here. This sling is not one where you can actually like run it with the sling attached. However, I looked up a bunch of reference photos of IDF soldiers wearing their glues around. And most of the time, if they are actually using the sling, the gun is sitting completely horizontal, kind of like it is on me right now. So clearly it's just something to carry the firearm from point A to point B, not something you're fighting in, which is typical for AK style slings. Um, as I understand it, the, the doctrine goes at least for AKs in the Soviet military and the Russian military. Safety comes off, your sling comes off, you're not fighting with your sling actually on. It's just there to allow you to carry it more easily and free up your hands. So do with that what you will. Now the trigger on this thing is pretty standard AK. Now, um, it, this thing does have, let's see, probably like a six or seven pound trigger. There's a little bit of creep and mushiness. So that mixed with the somewhat dubious mounting of the rear sight to the dust cover makes this thing maybe not the most accurate for potentially mechanically accurate or shooter accurate gun in the world. Um, but that's not really what a little short gun like this is designed for. However, uh, the other thing is there is a little bit of trigger slap, like it's not unpleasant to shoot, but because of that trigger slap with this thing, it also means that if you're not careful, or maybe if you are careful, uh, you can bump fire this thing pretty easily. Like if you're used to riding the reset, there's a good chance when you're really trying to rock and roll with that trigger, you're gonna start bump firing this thing. Now, because this thing is so flat shooting, it's not like it's gonna run away on you as long as you are shooting it properly, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind if you are interested in guns like this is because of the locking lugs on the magazines, it's typically not going to fit in dedicated AR-15 mag pouches. Uh, when I'm running my battle belt, I'll typically use the HSGI taco pouches, and that works really well. Alternatively, uh, what you'll see me wearing a lot is the Haley, um, this is the HS... D3, XR, heavy, whatever the numbers and letter combinations are. Um, that allows me to run the um, AK pattern mags a lot easier, including these Galil mags. Now, if you have a little bit of leeway, if it's not like dedicated mag or uh, mag pouches for ARs, you should be fine. But if you're running like the, the STAC Kiwis or the um, mag pouches from like HRT Tactical or anything like that, those mags just aren't going to fit, even though they are a 5.56 magazine. Again, do with that information as you go. Now, since we've covered the external aspects of this gun, let's go ahead and talk about the internals real quick. Um, really, if you're familiar with an AK bolt carrier group, you're effectively dealing with the same thing on, on this gun. So you've got a long stroke gas piston. The gas piston itself does have these little kind of flares uh, that are very I, um, symbolic or very identifiable as being from a Galil. Uh, and that's just to help center it as I understand and keep it running smoothly inside the gas tube and into your gas block up front. Um, but again, everything internally, whether it be your ejector and everything like that, um, this thing is very much an AK. And speaking of the ejector, this thing hucks 
brass um, and, uh, and steel for that matter. I have shot steel ammo with this and I will say it also seems to prefer steel because when I would shoot steel through this thing when I first got it and steel ammo was still roughly available, um, it ran very, very well. 100% reliability using steel cased ammo. With brass case ammo, I started running into some issues. Um, some of them being the round not fully getting out, causing like a double feed with an empty case in there. And I had a feeling that it might have something to do with the extractor spring not being stiff enough because these are, you know, new, I don't want to say new old stock, but they are, you know, old parts kits. So on a whim, I went and ordered a, um, replacement extractor spring from, I think that was from uh, Gun Parts Corp or Numerich. And when I actually took out the old one to put the new one in, it was pretty clear that that, that was definitely the culprit. The, the, uh, the old one looked like a, um, kind of, well, never mind. Uh, the old one looked pretty, pretty mangled. Uh, now, I don't necessarily want to blame that on ATI because again, they're using what they have, but it, it did affect function right out of the box, which, you know, I, I would hope not to deal with if I'm buying a new gun with a company, uh, with a, you know, manufacturer warranty, I think. Um, now that being said, I did try contacting um, ATI about the numerous issues that I was having with this gun out of the box. Radio silence on their part. Um, so do that information what you will. All the fixes were pretty easy fixes. So I, I'm not too terribly broken up about it. However, if you are considering getting into a Galil, maybe have a qualified gunsmith build you one as opposed to getting one from ATI. Now, to ATI's credit, I, when I was looking into these guns, um, one of the things that I had heard was that the ATI guns were designed to work on the Tapco mags, which this thing did come with one Tapco uh, Galil mag. And apparently the older ones would not work with the steel mag. So when we got the pistol version of this gun in the store uh, where I work, um, I immediately reached out to a friend of mine that had a Galil. I was like, hey, bring in some of your mags. I went and function tested it, made sure that the mags locked in positively without any modification. And once I saw that, I was like, yep, I want that. Because I've always wanted to get a Galil. I was looking at the parts kits that are on, again, like Apex gun parts. And I, I just didn't want to invest the money into and the time into buying one then buying a barrel and buying a receiver and then going to a gunsmith and having them build one. I just wanted to kind of not have to worry about it out of the box. Now, again, in this case, I did have to worry about some things, but it was just a much more simple process uh, to just buy one that was already put together. And then I also know what I'm getting by able, being able to look at the gun versus buying a parts kit of who knows what actual condition it's in and then having it put together. So um, that being said too, speaking of the magazines, the magazines are still readily available. And that is one cool thing with the Galils. I got like a four or five pack from uh, Atlantic Firearms. Uh, I'm mentioning a lot of companies here. I bought all of these items myself. I don't think these companies even know that I exist, but I'm just letting you guys know where I found them so that you might be able to find them yourself. But I bought a pack of these from Atlantic Firearms and the magazines came in they were in great shape uh, and they've all been running really well. Now, again, I have had some malfunctions with these. In fact, earlier today I had a split case. Um, the front half of the case stayed in the chamber. It ripped out the uh, rear of the case. The next round, thankfully, was able to pull it out. Otherwise, I would have shut the thing down for today and that would have been a big sad. Uh, that was shooting PMC uh, bronze, by the way, not that it's the ammo's fault, but just letting you guys know what happened. Uh, maybe if I polished up the chamber, that would help things, but I'm not, I'm not really too worried about doing that myself. Um, but you know, I, this isn't necessarily meant to be like a review of Galil's as a whole. This is more me just bringing in, in front of you guys a gun that I dig and I think is cool. I'm a sucker for like Cold War service rifles. You know, I, that's part, like, if you've been following my Instagram, I just posted a picture of my set me LC the other day. I just think little short carbines and you know all that from that era are just really neat they're iconic you know we see them in movies all the time and I just like having a piece of that for a collection myself and then by SBRing it I'm kind of locking myself into that gun and making sure that I don't find an excuse to sell it uh, later on down the line at least definitely not anytime soon so again these are fun to shoot is it going to replace an AR absolutely not 
but is it still a cool thing to have in your collection and something that is very iconic and has seen use all over the world in different versions? I think so. If you like, you can get the longer versions with the bottle opener and bipod. If you like the short ones, you can get the short ones because I mean, this packs away pretty nicely, fits really nicely in the crook of your passenger seat, easily accessible. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any experience with Galil's or if you guys have experience with the ATI Galil specifically, definitely let me know down in the description. I wanna say thanks to my patrons for helping to make a video like this one possible. Again, I paid for this gun, I paid for the ammo to put through this, so the support that I get over there helps directly fund what I'm able to do when I'm actually out here with the range with one of these things. So thank you to my patrons. Because of that, we post all our content over there early. We also have some exclusive content, some sneak peek stuff. Uh, hopefully we're gonna be doing some more live streams again soon. If any of that sounds interesting or you just wanna financially support the channel, definitely follow the links in the description down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw that in the comment section as well. Uh, I'm sure people will have already posted their favorite conspiracies about uh, you know, Israel or anyone else in that region or the United States and their involvement therein. Knock yourselves out. I'm not really gonna deal with any of that stuff myself. I just like to stay hands off when it comes to some people's crazy ideas. So with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.